Yeah. So basically, just to kind of give you guys a heads up, um, we started uh, the Sky Pirates kind of like Facebook page, kind of intended to be um, maybe eventually like a bar stool sports for aviation, you know, the non PC side of the house, but not go so deep as to, you know, ruin your career type thing. Um, and in the meantime, we, uh, we started doing a podcast called furlough Fridays where, um, my buddy Brandon and I, we kind of co-host it and we talk with airline pilots on the verge of being furloughed. Uh, typically we have whiskey in hand by the end of the hour and a half, we probably, you know, whiskey needs to be sat down and, and put away, but we usually don't. Um, and we sort of talk about aviation, you know, industry type stuff for maybe 20% and then smoking and joking and making fun of each other, you know, the other 80%. Um, one common theme that came of that is in the midst of COVID, there's still a lot of opportunity. Um, and, and, you know, obviously being active duty, you guys, uh, have job security um but a lot of the civilian guys uh, in the airlines are dealing with a lot of insecurity right now especially financially um so then we kind of pivoted a little bit keeping the furlough friday going just because it's fun and we like whiskey um and we started another series called uh the opportunity hour and it's basically talking business and entrepreneurship um, as long as it fits one and or two bills and that's your air crew that have a, uh, side hustle, side job, side gig, and, or you're a small business that serves air crew with a product or service. Um, Mike Daly, uh, put me in touch with Zach, um, you know, cause he kind of thought it fit that bill. Uh, and I, jumped onto your IG page and was highly entertained. Um, and I'm not sure we might make this a little separate, uh, um, series or whatever, focusing on like the, the social media side of the house, you know, guys like you that have IG pages or YouTube channels, but are aviation related. Um, so with that, uh, the crew of at the real TACC is here. Um, if you guys would each take uh, one to two minutes to give us the Cliff Notes version of of uh, what you do uh, in the military, as well as your role with the IG page, and uh, we'll let we'll let Zach start it off. Yeah, I, the as far as role in the military, we're all going to be pretty similar. Uh, we're all KC-135 pilots. Uh, active duty at uh, McDill Air Force Base. And then uh, as far as the, the Instagram page, uh, Joe and I um, primarily run it and, uh, and we're just uh, trying to find ways to keep people entertained as well as kind of introduce uh, the products that we're and designs that we're coming up with. Joe? Yeah, so uh, same for me, KC-135 pilot. Uh, along with Zach and Chris. Uh, Zach and I were actually stationed at Fairchild a couple years ago together, and now we're all at McDill. Um, so yeah, we come up with the uh, this whole idea of uh, rebranding our current squadron, and uh, that kind of led us through umpteen different designs for a t-shirt, and we uh, thought, hey, this uh, might be a good idea to start a company, and then turned it into an Instagram page to see if anybody liked it. And it turns out they did. So we ran with it. Chris. All right. Uh, so same 135 pilots. Uh, I guess Zach and Joe are, are they're the real, they're the social media savvy, savvy friends. Uh, they really run the Instagram. I would be the guy in the background that, really kind of takes everybody's orders and kind of tries to track it, put it all together and, and uh, uh, try to manage all that. Lately, there's been a few. So, good. so you guys basically uh, are a merchandise company 
being pushed through Instagram as opposed to an Instagram page that started creating your own merch? Yeah, I would, yeah. I would say we started trying to do a couple shirts and then it just kind of blew up from there. Um, what is it? Is it the McDill boys? Is the McDill boys and the real Whoa. TAC, are you guys the same or? Okay, you no. just kind of feed off no. each other? We yeah we know I mean we know those guys obviously okay. still yeah uh, and we you know we kind of like to rep each other's stuff but uh, they're technically separate okay yeah you guys are both putting out great content um, which leads me to my next question well so as I mentioned at the beginning with the sky pirates right we kind of want to do what you guys were doing with memes and everything and that's way harder than it looks especially to do it consistently. Um, do you guys have a process in place? What, or is it just Chris's genius sitting out there and in, in the old West coming up with these ideas and <laughs> telling you guys it's to upload it? It's definitely not my genius. I would say Zach comes up with the vast majority of them. So I don't really know where he finds the time with his 13 kids that he has, but oh, geez. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. it's more <laughs> Maybe that's where I get a lot of my ideas is, is yeah. inspiration from the, the stuff that my kids do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that really? and then as far as the time goes, uh, just ask Kim Cotter uh, how Zach's being uh, super... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Up in safety. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Are you, your uh, professional career is suffering a little bit. Is that right? <laughs> well, the, uh, the, the work from home has helped. Oh, of course. Yeah. Tele yeah, teleworking yeah. has helped. But uh, yep. honestly, most of the stuff that I come up with is like as I'm getting ready for bed or, you know, whatever, I, where I have a few minutes of, of silence and, and I'll typically just write stuff down in like my, uh, my Google notes or like the notes on my phone. And then it, whenever I get the chance, try and throw it into a, a meme or something. And then I'll, I'll throw it to, to these two guys and kind of see what they think. And they usually give me the thumbs up or the thumbs down or, hey, Hey, tweak this. Maybe, maybe this is a little too, too much. And then, uh, and then we just, you know, send it to the world. Yeah. That's great that you guys are actually executing on that process because we tried to execute on it and get distracted with careers and family too. And it, and it never happens. So, right. uh, so you're doing, yeah. you're doing yeah. all the creative, uh, essentially from idea to getting it, um, into the meme obviously with feedback from these guys, or do you guys have someone that uh, specifically uh, has that design background? No, yeah, we're doing it all, all in house. Yeah. yeah, we've got the, we've got the apps, like the meme generator apps. So that it makes it pretty easy. And as long as you have a decent idea, um, you know, the, the execution really isn't too bad. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of great meme pages out there too, that, that uh, that have inspired us, I guess. Like Tanker Meme Stream was kind of the first one that that we started following, and like this is this is some funny stuff, and it's it's stuff that you can really you know kind of associate with, and uh, yeah, it makes it all that more entertaining when you're kind of part of that inside joke. Yep. Yeah, yeah. there's that. They're the Viper guys, um, the Bomber Meme Stream. Kind of looked at what those guys were putting out as far as content goes, and seeing what how many likes theirs are getting and like oh well we have the same ideas like why not yeah have you guys kind of reached out behind the scenes to to any of those other uh yeah so with uh tanker meme stream that's how we got our first couple out there we sent them to them rather than just posting them ourselves uh or we posted them ourselves and then forwarded to their inbox and hoping that they would post some of them and they eventually did and uh I think the the couple that took off for us were some of the uh, having to do with PA and mortuary affairs deals. I think those guys like those, so those got a lot of hits. You guys uh, should start a, a separate feed focusing on finance. I don't know if you guys have issues on your side of the house. Maybe not. It's probably all automated, but uh, they, they might be next. Uh, so that's, that's the bane of the reserve side, trying to get paid when you go on trips. But um, yeah, so you guys have t-shirts, stickers, koozies, all kinds of swag. Um, 
you guys are pretty new, I think. Are you guys making money yet? I would say uh, we we have been making a profit, uh, but we're also trying to get kind of just everything together. The hardest part of this whole thing uh, is not coming up with the designs because we've got Zach and he's got like designs coming out his ears. Uh, and the same with Joe. Joe's sitting there, keeps throwing extra stuff and ideas to be put together. The hardest part though is trying to get inventory potentially or a means of getting the shirts drop shipped uh, from an outside supplier in a timely manner. And uh, you know, there's there's places like Custom Ink, but I don't we don't want to be that that kind of organization where you're just outsourcing to a Custom Ink. We want to have our own kind of our own name and uh, and, and make it a good product. So uh, I would say we have made a profit over the last couple of weeks, but it's all just going right back into figuring out how to make more and and uh, and better, more efficient. Yeah, trouble with giving away free merchandise too. You what? Yeah, people like to give away free stickers. And freebies. Yeah, I like to hand out free stuff. So the guys are trying to trying to reel me back in. Yeah, it's all right. It's early brand awareness. I mean, that goes a long way, especially if you can afford it early on. Exactly. <laughs> Anybody deploying soon? I feel like uh, you throw some stickers out there in one of the deployed locations, you'll start yeah. getting a lot of attention quickly that way too. Yeah, so none of us are, but we're trying to, the, our sister squadron is deployed right now, so we're trying to get some of the McDilly Dilly stickers out to them and uh, let them go maniac crazy and tag everything with them. I like it. Yeah, we have uh, a couple of deployments coming up soon, too. Um, I think November is our first one, maybe October. Uh, but if you guys want to send a bunch of stuff out with us, I, you know, we could probably make that happen. So, yeah, for um, sure. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, you guys, I see you on, on the gram. Are you on any other platforms yet or have any intentions of uh, going to Facebook and or YouTube or anything? So we well, have a fledgling Facebook page, but uh, still trying to figure that one out. Yeah, we, yeah, we haven't put much effort into the Facebook page yet. I'm trying to, trying to make it more of a... Uh, shop page but once we have our own website up and running i think that's when the facebook page will really start putting some publicity into that that'll be another platform for people to go and uh, see the products that we have in inventory and our ones that they can order or pre-order um, and as far as the website goes it's almost finished uh working on a launch date for that um waiting for to finalize some more of the logistics so chris is working that side of the house as far as the logistics go. And then once that's set, then we'll, uh, we'll be ready to launch the website. And what's the domain for that going to be? Do you know yet? It's going to be the real TACC.com. Okay. So, so said it, but it's, it's the aviation creative collab is what TACC stands for in our case. Yeah. Yeah. So that was actually, <laughs> I, I picked up on that, but not, it wasn't transparent at first. I'm like, Oh, these, somebody must've came over from TACC. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. The, the intent early on was like, we were trying to figure out a name, this thing. And we kept, we came up with, I don't know, half a dozen names. And at one point it was like, we just need to figure out a name that has TACC in it because we're all AMC guys. And that's been the bane of our existence for the last better part of a decade. And uh, it just felt good to be able to uh, have something that was a little, snap back if you will yeah i like it i think uh you achieved your goal on that one definitely um <laughs> are there any other pages or personalities that you guys are using as maybe a template or inspiration for what you guys are doing i mean maybe like a little blend of uh like squadron posters uh combined with like aviator gear some some of that stuff but we also uh are kind of trying to and we've, we've had a few requests for like out for designs so instead of just pushing uh you know these kind of pre-designed logos or or templates for for units 
Um, we're also taking design requests. So uh, like we're currently working with a, a C-17 unit on, on kind of rebranding their squadron, getting their, their stuff done. Uh, we also worked with a, a 135 squadron uh, at Fairchild uh, on some things. So we're, we're kind of, that's where the collab comes from. And then uh, like Joe was saying, we started out uh, with our own squadron, uh, just trying to make some, some shirts that would be kind of a fun uh, morale shirt really. And, uh, and it ended up generating a lot of, a lot of interest and kind of turned into a, uh, a, an official, unofficial uh, morale shirt. So that was kind of where our, our, the idea, yeah, Joe's got it there. Oh, right on. Yeah. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it turned, out, it turned out pretty cool, and I think people are excited about it. Yeah, you guys are going to have to come down the street and do something with us. Yeah, we'd love uh, we've love uh, to. I'm we've sorry. actually got something in the works uh, for you guys that, funny enough, a couple, a pirate crew stole my jet last week. And uh, while we were sitting there debating on whether we were going to send our boom operator on their jet, uh, I was like, oh, well, well, I have a captive audience. What do you guys think of this? And yeah. Showed them the design and they really liked it. So Cool. Do you remember who you talked to? Uh, I don't. I don't remember who the crew was. Um, it was a pretty senior boom operator, though, that I showed. All right, but uh, yeah, I'll, t I'll, t yeah. I'll ask around, and I think it'd be great to work with you guys. I, th I think it'd be awesome um, too if you guys, you know, wanted to collab with the Sky Pirates too. Just you know, throw your stuff up there. We'd we'd love it. Um, not not a whole lot of traction there yet either. Just a, a few hundred people, um, but we also have uh, the Bro Network facebook page or group mm -hmm. um and that that was designed to be very non-pc um and there's some definitely <laughs> non-pc stuff on there but um that's got uh i, I want to say like 13 or 1500 people so it would definitely get seen by military aviators out there too so definitely feel free to uh to blast it on there too Awesome. Uh, like awesome. I said, it's, that's the type of stuff that we wanted anyways. Right. And whether it comes from us or comes from somebody else, you know, we just want, you know, people's attention kind of like you guys do. And if we can push each other back and forth, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely on board with that. Sure. But anything else you guys got going on that, uh, that you want to discuss regarding uh, your merch or your IG page or anything? I mean, right now, you know, we're trying to kind of keep everything sorted out, but we're more than open for uh, for more ideas. Uh, we just did those Zippy Boys stickers. Um, Zippy Girls, I think, are coming out because it's 2020 and you don't want to be gender denominational. Yeah. We, actually had, <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of, probably half our orders were from were from women. So yeah. it was, it's kind of cool. That's, I mean, really almost everything we do just, just kind of snowballs or spins off something else. So someone sees one of the designs on the Instagram page and they're like, Hey, I really like this. Could you do something for us? And this is our unit. This is our, you know, this is our, uh, our mascot or, you know, something like that. These are some, some major, um, city, you know, some, some stuff in our city that, that we really kind of use and, and, really shows kind of where we are things that we hold uh i guess important to us and uh and so that's kind of how it happens is we just we see that and we we work with the design like the zippy boys um that's been a, a real theme going around instagram lately the the zipper zipper gate and uh and so we took wait that. i'm unfamiliar with zipper gate <laughs> so oh man <laughs> yeah there was a uh, probably a couple of weeks ago, somebody somebody latched on to a, a post on a on a public affairs professional's Facebook page, I think, and it was a, kind of a PSA saying, "Hey, uh, if you can pass to your crews uh, to to remain in regs, we've had a lot of uh, submissions that we can't use for recruiting purposes because air crew zippers have been below the name tag." So then everybody latched on that was, you know, of course, going wild with that. And so that was kind of what inspired us. And, and we actually had a request for some kind of zipper themed 
uh, sticker. And, uh, and so that's what we came up with. Uh, the, the zippy boys, it's, it's the wings and it's got a, a zipper in the middle as opposed to the, the design on the normal uh, pilot wings. I've seen the logo or I've seen the, the patch. I love it. Uh, I'm happy to know the backstory now. And that is why I will be retiring in 20 years to the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. Um, have you guys considered partnering with, uh, say, for example, like a name tapes to where you do the collab with, um, I don't know, Fairchild, for, for example, and you come up with something for them and you control it, you know, all the way from design to distribution and, you know, they will you know, give you a discount because the volume you're putting through there and you make a few bucks on production as well. Is that something you guys have considered? So that's, that's been a vast majority of the, the talk I think lately is trying to find a distributor that or someone that can produce this for us. Um, I don't think we've, got, we've talked to name tapes for a couple ideas uh, for patches, but unfortunately they were just kind of limited on what they were able to do. Uh, we haven't talked to him about shirts. I didn't realize they forgot they did that, but, uh, we need, we do, I, I think we do need someone, uh, that can essentially make it for us and drop ship because Joe is probably going to be moving here and, uh, going knows where Zach and I are going to be going, keeping the inventory, uh, in our houses isn't probably going to be the most effective. Right. Yeah, so, once you guys get a, a process established, it'll make that uh, profit margin increase. As yeah, well. so I mean, uh, we've we've been doing stuff like Bonfire, uh, which is nice uh, because they they put every your logo on whatever the person wants to order. Um, and we've been looking at getting Shopify, but with Shopify, you need product, uh, but you can link other uh other websites or other companies to your Shopify accounts that'll do drop shipping for you. So similar to the way it worked with Bonfire. Um, it just doesn't seem like there's one good, one fixes all for us right now. Um, that's been we found, part. Yeah, we found one uh, company that I think uh, we can work with that kind of lets you do a little more customization. Because for us, like, it's not just about putting a logo on a shirt or putting a design on a shirt and selling it. Like we want to build the brand too. So we want that brand recognition. Um, and we found one that we can do a little more customization with the designs and what we can put on the shirts and hats and whatever else we want to come up with. And, but the, and they also do the drop shipping thing. So we don't necessarily have to hold an inventory, uh, which like Chris said, is our biggest challenge right now. Um, is being able to hold an inventory. So yeah, that would drive our profit margins way up, but logistically speaking, we just can't do it right now. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting too, because you know we were talking about shirts earlier and patches, but then you get into like the hardware side, you know, the, uh, the coffee mugs and the coasters, uh, poker chips, um, I'm not sure, but I'm guessing that everybody, you know, you might have to use different companies to handle different product types, which is probably a pain in the ass to, to coordinate all that stuff too. Yeah. So a lot of companies will do, you know, if they're going to do like final press and stuff like that, you can get a lot of things done, you know, coffee cups and Arctic's and Yetis or whatever, kind of from the same general person. Uh, but once you start getting into like the more creative stuff, like you're saying poker chips and stuff like that, then it, it becomes more of a challenge as to yep. how you get that done or who's even going to do it. The hope is that at some point we can do it ourselves, but uh, I think, I think might be a little ways in the future right now. You'll have to move to uh, Southeast Asia and start your own sweatshop. Yeah. You know, how committed are you, so Chris? Nimble. <laughs> yeah, their the fingers are just so nimble. <laughs> We're trying to figure out who uh, who some brands like Nike and and Ruka who they go through and 
you know, just, just cut out the middleman, go directly to the sweatshop. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the only problem is COVID has interrupted so many supply chains that uh, maybe keeping it in-house might be better. Um, is yeah. there anything, uh, anything that our small network can do in terms of ideas, uh, sweat equity, anything that you guys need right now that uh, you know might pique somebody's interest and they could reach out to you and get involved? I feel like the biggest thing right now is just getting our name out there, right? Just, just like you were saying with the uh, Air Pirates uh, or Sky Pirates, excuse me. Uh, Don't worry, I'll edit that out. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> Be good. Uh, no, so the, the biggest thing is just getting our name out there and then brand recognition, right? So I think we have uh, a little over 200 followers right now on Instagram, um, which is great because we had none, you know, a couple months ago. Yep. Uh, we're at 250 now. Yeah. So it's just something that would be great to be, just keep pushing that out there, push out the designs so that other people could see it. Uh, Cause a lot of them are really funny and it would just, I think a lot of people would uh, benefit from the humor, especially right now. No, I think they are funny. And if you guys keep pushing it out consistently, which you are, uh, I think you're, you're going to see uh, quick growth. You know, yeah. Obviously, as you know, nothing happens overnight, uh, right. sure. but it looks like you guys are doing pretty good. Sure. But uh, yeah, anything, uh, anything else you guys want to discuss before we close this thing out? Yeah, I think we, the collab thing is, is big, big for us. So yeah, if anybody has anything, uh, also we'd hope to eventually use, uh, our platform, whether it's Instagram or, or the website to also kind of, uh, allow people to submit their own designs and, and, and we can kind of work with those, tweak them, maybe, uh, improve them or, or build on them and, and eventually get it to where, uh, other people maybe who aren't within that small circle that's trying to, to, to do this project. Um, that they can join in as well because we've talked about I mean how many times you walk into an FBO or a squadron somewhere or you know a deployed location where you see a sticker or a patch or something that you're like that's awesome I really wish I had some of those and to get to a point where where people can kind of throw their designs out there and say hey does anybody else want to join join in on this yeah. And one thing I was thinking of too, when you said that, you know, you guys, your roots with the real TACC um, is there and it's obvious. Uh, but with the name, you know, the aviation creative collab, that can be bigger than just military. You know, right. it's like, it appeals yeah. to, to such a large demographic and aviation outside the military is like a cult following. Um, and I don't know if you've considered reaching out to maybe some local, uh, influencers, you know, the, uh, the pretty girl that posts a bunch of, uh, pics here in Tampa. I don't have any names off the top of my head, but you know, you find somebody like that, that has five to 7,000 followers and you can probably, you know, throw her in some t-shirts and, uh, and some swag and for a, a low price, uh, you might be able to get a lot of viz and there's a lot of military supporters in Tampa. There's a lot of, um, you know, aviation lovers. Um, you know, you might be able to, to put that into practice locally and then replicate it in locations where you are able to rebrand, um, different squadrons, but just the thought that, uh, you know, popped into my head while you were kind of giving that explanation. Sure. Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah. But uh well awesome guys. I appreciate your time. Um definitely reach out if if anything pops up. I'll definitely be pushing your stuff um and buying it as well. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking it. forward to see what your uh reserve squadron um images look like. So Oh, we'll be in touch for sure. <laughs> Cool, guys. Well, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I appreciate your time. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thanks, man. You too. All right. See you, fellas. See you. See you.